with the NFC West or let's NFC East. Well, let's do East. On do you want to yeah. do like the whole NFC and then AFC? Okay, let's do NFC East. What is because that's your division with the Eagles. You got the Eagles. Kyle. This is going to be one of the most competitive divisions right now in the league. What have you? Um, what who have you got at number one? Number one seed. So, I mean, at number one, I've got the Eagles, and it's simply because of the improvements that they have made compared to the rest of that division. So I think that that division could be the most improved, which is even crazy because three of those teams right. made it last year in the playoffs. Um, I have the Eagles at number one because ultimately they have a ton of – they have a ton of additions. Like, you know, they they, they lost a guy like so, – um, like right. um, – like, uh, the defense alignment who went to the for Javon Hargrave, who went to the 49ers, and they're replacing with a guy like Jalen Carter. I, I think the replacements that they bring in were, if not better, the same right. as the guys that left. The one issue that I have a few worries at is at linebacker and at corner. Um, I mean, and at safety. Um, but there's some young guys there that I think are really gonna fit in. So that's my number one pick for um for is the Eagles. And it's really simply because, yes, while they have the hardest um schedule the Cowboys and the Giants both have equally very hard schedules as well right. so I don't see it being like whoa one team has a really really easy schedule they're gonna run away with this division yeah that so would be number one for me I'd say the Eagles but history has shown Super yep. Bowl teams yep. afterwards except I mean really the only teams that make it back to full strength are led yeah. amazingly great exactly you know, Chiefs Patriots type of teams and so if if they can return to that level, then sure. I just have a hard time because if you look back, the last few NFC teams to come out, yep. the uh, Rams and 49ers have both had terrible seasons uh, going back. Yeah, I guess, I guess the next season. Well, and it's historically, that, so it's, it's historically like that. And so I would say the one thing that is interesting about the, all of this is the, the NFC East has not had a repeat division winner for in over a decade. So if I'm going to look at this team and I'm going to say, you're definitely going to repeat, I don't think it's a, it's a runaway. It's just I don't think the other teams did enough. Um, I would say the Cowboys are a close second. The Cowboys are definitely going to rival the Eagles for that spot, tough spot. Um, that's I, The Cowboys are my pick at number two. Right. And it's simply because I'm not confident in the play calling duties being assumed yeah. by the head coach. He wasn't a good play they caller. also got in, rid of Kellen Moore. Yeah, and, and he made the decision, and he, he wasn't a good play caller in Green Bay. That was one of his biggest um, weaknesses. I don't know how this changes um, with him now assuming play calling. A lot of Cowboys fans are really excited, but I don't think Cowboys fans remember how bad the play calling right. was towards the end of McCarthy's tenure in Green Bay. I have the number two because I just think that they have more weapons on offense and defense than the Giants do to have the Giants as number two. But I think the Giants are going to be, once again, that pesky team. I just... They made improvements by getting Waller at the offensive position. I don't think the Giants have done yeah. enough to, to well from an offensive a, standpoint. My thing. To over training camp, do the Giants get DeAndre Hopkins? Would that switch your mind? Oh, that would switch my mind. I yeah. think bringing a true number one receiver because Darren Waller is going to be the favorite target for Daniel Jones, but he himself has struggled with injuries. Yeah, you bring in a number one receiver, and I think all of a sudden Daniel Jones could have very much of a similar season like Jalen Hurts had last year when you bring in that number one guy. We all know how important any quarterback, even Patrick Mahomes, is to have that not that target for me it's number two it's cowboys um and yeah I, i'm i'm gonna have to agree with you the giants offensive line got a lot better their it interior did. offensive yep. line they drafted a uh the center out of minnesota yep. I, I think it was like fred michael schmitz or something like that it was some it, it was the center out of minnesota basically they drafted him and so i think their interior offensive line has gotten better but the receiving core it's 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 very depth because it's like you have jameson crowder you have sterling shepherd you have uh, there's like four uh, Hodges, obviously, yeah. and that Hodgins. There's a few they have taken with the receiving core. That's a big weakness last year. They've taken a lot of steps to kind of add depth, but they don't have a true number one, and they have a lot of slot type receivers. If you look at their um, whole roster, so I'm going to say Cowboys two as as you Giants three and uh, Commanders fourth, which. I think that might change. So, I think the Giants are a sleeper team because they I got think a lot they're a sleeper than... team. I also think that if... and the corner from Maryland they got in the first um, yeah. round. That guy is the one Commander of my favorite guys coming corner. out. Emmanuel, uh, 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 no, no, his um, uh, Deontay Banks. Yeah, Deontay, Deontay Banks. Banks. Yeah. So, I, you know, I would say I, I'm going to say this right now. If if the Commanders can figure out who their guy is at QB, and this is sort of my cap for this division, if the yeah. Commanders can fin figure out who's at QB, I'm actually going to be bold and say I actually think the Commanders take spot three 
and this is tentatively. It's if they can figure out who's at number. And I and I know it's going to sound crazy. I don't think the Giants or the Commanders make the playoffs this year. Right. But I think the Commanders finish three, and this is the reason why is because. I think that, first of all, this is Rivera's last year. If it doesn't work out, he's fired, which is unfortunate because I don't know if he's really been the issue at, right. um, at, at, in the, for their team. If, if Sam Howell has a decent season, the commanders have almost a better roster than the Giants. You've got Terry McLaurin That's and Josh Dotson, um, Jahan Dotson, uh, Jahan yeah. Dotson at receiver. Then you've got an underrated running back crew that – you know, um, Robinson was underrated. Mm -hmm. I'm worried about their O-line, and that's where I'm tentative. I, I'm going to say commanders for three, but I'm only saying that because I'm not confident Giants. that the Darren Waller trade yeah. volts the Giants into being that third, second, or second team. Now, this all could change if a guy gets brought in like DeAndre Hopkins. I think the Giants could potentially even push to three. I just think yeah. there's not enough offensive weapons to make the Giants a firepower in this division, and that's sort of my, fin that's Maybe. my finishing talk. Maybe. Okay, so we, we got that one. Eagles uh, one, Cowboys two, Giants three, and Commanders four. For you, um, I got Giants four. Dropping okay. four and Commanders at three. It's a tentative. I know it's bold, but that's just my opinion. Okay. 